Today in the first of a two part series, MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison takes a look at the facts behind the rhetoric in the latest flood of TV attacks. Governor Bullock entered this race with relatively good approval ratings and a big part of the Republican strategy is to go negative and take that down. Like this ad from Senator Dane's campaign. Bullock supports government controlled health care and a carbon tax. He supports sanctuary cities for illegal immigrants, and he supports Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi's liberal gun control agenda. And he's ready to help them pass the largest tax hike in American history. Wow, that's a lot to unpack. But there's more from outside Republican groups, like this from the Senate Leadership Fund. Bullock stacked his coronavirus relief task force with his own campaign donors, and many of them stand to benefit. News reports found just 13% of Montana's relief funding had actually reached small businesses and towns by late July. And this one from the National Republican Senatorial Committee. An ambitious governor who exploits Montana taxpayers, like the 14 million in state contracts paid to his brother's company, using state troopers as his personal security detail while abandoning his job to run for president. Bullock did find time to veto a bill that would have saved seniors $21 million on their social security benefits. Let's start with that last ad. His brother's Butte-based engineering company did get those contracts, but that was long after Bullock's brother sold his financial interest in the company, although he still sits on the company board. The NRSC has provided no evidence that the contracts weren't properly awarded. State troopers did accompany Bullock on presidential campaign trips, as they do everywhere under an agreement with the state justice department. Bullock agreed to pay the highway patrol's incidental expenses for out-of-state travel during his presidential campaign. And the $21 million? That was a tax cut bill that Bullock indicated he would veto because he said the state couldn't afford it, and Republicans in the legislature passed it anyway. On coronavirus relief, about half of the 24 task force members appointed by Bullock to advise where the money should go have donated to his campaigns. And some of them own businesses that received relief grants, but they're a tiny fraction of the thousands of Montana businesses that have benefited. As for distribution of the money, nearly $300 million, or 25%, is now out the door and hundreds of millions more have been allocated for schools, local governments, enhanced unemployment benefits, and other uses in the coming months. And finally, let's go through that raft of charges in the ad from Senator Dane's campaign. On health care, Bullock does support creating a public option, which would be a government-run health insurer to compete with private insurers, not exactly government-controlled health care. Bullock says he's never supported a carbon tax, although a climate solutions council he appointed may recommend one. Bullock also does not support sanctuary cities. He did veto a Republican-passed bill last year to ban sanctuary cities in Montana, saying it was unconstitutional and unnecessary because Montana has no sanctuary cities. On guns, Bullock does support universal background checks, including sales at gun shows, and a future ban on the sale of assault-style weapons. And finally, that largest tax hike in American history? That's presidential candidate Joe Biden's proposal to raise taxes on those earning more than $400,000 a year, a proposal that Bullock has not said he supports. With two months until Election Day, no doubt you'll be seeing more of these ads going after Bullock and his record. We'll keep reporting on where the candidates stand. And tomorrow, we take a look at a line of attack and support on Senator Daines' record on China. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News.